Hello students and welcome to the next lesson in our AS Level Psychology course. Today's lesson will be on culture. What is culture? Culture is the sum of ideology, behaviours and ideals in the way of life of a society. Bowlby said that culture is a universal behaviour, although we know that many cultures can be very different. There are two main styles of culture, individualistic cultures and collectivist cultures. So what are individualistic cultures? These are cultures where the importance is placed on personal achievement and attainment. People tend to be more selfish and narcissistic because the culture wants people to do well individually. General examples include common uh, US or European countries. So states in the US or countries in Europe all tend to be individualistic because they want their children to grow up to become very successful for themselves. Collectivist cultures. As you can assume, here the importance is placed on the well-being of a social group, so people tend to be more generous and giving and feel the need to help others. Examples include Puerto Rico or African tribes. Here people want to help a social group and they tend to stick together as families. Here in the houses in these African tribes or in Puerto Rico they live together as grandparents, grandchildren, cousins, nieces, nephews. They all live in a big family together and they put the importance on people becoming a very important member of that social group. If you can be one of the family members that provides the food to the social group, that's pretty much what they aim to be. So how does this affect the long-term goals of child rearing? Individualistic cultures will emphasise the importance of independence on the children. For example, families in the USA encourage the children to go to summer schools so that they become more intelligent and get into better schools and maybe make more money when they're older. Collectivist cultures tend to want their children to become important members of their social group. So, for example, the example that we just used was that the families want to perhaps influence their children to be stay-at-home um, kind of wives or husbands to be able to have the good skills of a family member to help everyone out in the house. How does this affect the ways parents respond to their children's needs? Individualistic cultures often have the parents spend more time away from the children for work-related reasons. For example, some German parents leave their children alone to teach them independence. This then allows them to form more type B attachments. Collectivist cultures spend far more time with their children to cater for their needs. For example, the Dogon women in Mali keep their children with them at all time. However, this makes them form type C attachments later in life. How relationships are valued in these cultures? Relationships are, diff are measured differently worldwide. The Efe people in Zambia spend up to 60% of their time with their other females after birth. So they spend more time away from mothers, but more time with other females in the tribe. The attachments they form with the mother is just as strong as that of individualistic cultures. So maybe there's not that much difference with how relationships are formed worldwide. Here are some questions on culture. What I'd like you to do now is have a go at attempting these and then whenever you're ready, pause the video to give yourself time, but hit play to see the answers. Here are the answers. If you've got all of these right, congratulations. I'd advise you to move on to the next video, which will be on cultural variations in attachment. As always, comment if you have any questions. Be sure to check out this lesson's notes and visit revisealevel.co.uk if you have any more questions or information for the rest of your subjects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.